Well, it's race recap time, so let's dive in and see what really happened out there. So first, a little update on recovery. Uh, my legs feel awesome. Like, I mean, I've, I'm totally recovered. I went for a little bike ride yesterday. Legs felt great. Uh, you know, uphills felt a little tiring, but not bad. Uh, and, you know, I just, I feel refreshed. I feel good. Ankle feels strong, feels good. I'm not feeling that little twinge uh, that I would occasionally feel when I'm walking down like the stairs of my house to come down here to the studio. It's just, uh, feels good. So really encouraged by that. Um, still gonna take some time off from running, just another, maybe another week or so, but I am gonna hit the trails again here later uh, on the mountain bike. Gonna just do my backyard trail on the bike and see how that goes for a couple laps. I don't know, we'll see. Should be good and fun. So anyway, um, the race went, you know, pretty well. You guys have watched the video by now. Uh, it seems to be, you know, well received. I'm glad you guys liked it. The the raw uh, emotion in the video, you know, I'm always going to try to tell the true story of ultra running and not sugarcoat it and show you that like, oh, everything's great. And, you know, look at me. I finished the race. No issues. No, not going to do that. I'll show you the the good and the bad, the the almost quitting, the, the high points, the low points, all of that. So I uh, hope you guys have liked it. So we got to the race site Friday, checked in, and then we had dinner uh, at the only place that was open and had uh, a couple of vegan options. We had some Beyond Burgers, uh, but it was pretty good. It would have been a cool place to hang out if I was not running and drink a couple beers, but I was running, so I didn't have any beer, but my wife did. <laughs> All right, so the race. Race morning, um, you know, we started off there in Ohio Pala, actually right there by that pub where we had the, uh, the burgers, and uh, right away started up a hill, uh, literally within like a tenth of a mile we were climbing and it didn't stop climbing for a while. Uh, and then, you know, it was dark. Um, I used a headlamp for just uh, maybe the first couple of miles just to have a little bit of extra brightness because it wasn't totally bright yet. Uh, but by the time we got up to like where you see the, all the fire damaged area uh, in the video, it was plenty of bright to not use a headlamp. And it was really pretty, just the, the way the area looked with the, uh, the area that had been burnt was cool, seeing the new growth come back. And you could look off and see the Yakagani River, and uh, it was just beautiful. And the climbing went pretty well. I was with uh, Mike and Aaron for a little while. We ran together, and then we got to the biggest climb of the day around mile six, and I kind of left them on the climb. I, I power hiked on pretty good with the poles. Uh, I never saw Aaron again, but I did see Mike later on in the race. Um, and so it was, it was good. Got to the first aid station 11 miles in, um, you know, the climbing was tough, uh, but felt pretty good overall. And then just continued trucking on, you know, aid station two comes by, um, you know, I had a little issue with the, the tape on my ankle where I had, I taped up the ankles, you know, using Trail Sage's method, which worked great. Uh, great channel, by the way, if you haven't checked out Trail Sage, go check him out. I'll put a little thing in the end of the video for you guys to check it out. Uh, but. I had I wrapped the tape a little bit too low on the top of the ankle so that when my ankle was, you know, flexed up like this, you know, climbing or whatever, it was right across the top of the foot causing an issue. So I had to get the scissors and cut that and uh, then it felt a lot better. So that was that resolved that issue, which was good. So I also should note when I came into aid station one, uh, I did I dropped my poles off with my wife because I wasn't planning to use them at all except for that first segment because of all the climbing. Um, so I left them with her. And then there was a decent amount of climbing in that segment from aid station one to aid station two. And I could tell my legs didn't have the strength that they used to. So I decided to pick the poles back up later on in the race. I think it was like maybe aid station three that I did that. Um, but I, you know, not planning to use the poles the whole time. I didn't bring my gloves that I usually wear when I'm going to wear, when I'm going to use poles for a long time. So I had to come up with a, a solution. I actually took some KT tape and wrapped it around the thumb, which you can see uh, in the video where I'm, contemplating life and and quitting uh, you can see it there but uh, it worked out pretty well and kept me from blistering because I could feel that hot spot on my right hand forming uh, from the from the strap on the on the glove on the uh, on the poles uh, but that worked okay with the KT tape things were going um, okay and then when I was uh, between age station two and three I was coming downhill I had just talked about the sporting clay shooting range and I somehow landed on the ankle or on the heel there on one of those roots that you could see in the video and just that same motion where it just sent excruciating pain in the in the uh, inside the heel area really bad uh, hurt a lot um, and just 
luckily I, I got moving after I, you know, was frustrated and screamed a little bit, but got moving and, uh, you know, it wasn't any, didn't have any swelling issues, luckily, uh, or anything like that. And the pain dissipated. So I was able to keep going, got to aid station three and, uh, did an okay stop there. You know, I was, I was feeling, I was in a low spot. Um, I was short with my wife, um, you know, at times, uh, and I told her, I was like, you know, I'm sorry, I'm a, uh, you know, a butthole. <laughs> and, uh, you know, she kissed me and said, you know, it's okay. And, uh, you know, she, she knows how sometimes when you get in low spots, uh, attitudes um, get the best of you. And you might say things you don't mean uh, or just get short with somebody. Uh, so if you're planning on crewing somebody, just know that if they get in a low spot, uh, you know, don't take it personal. It's just, it's the race, the emotions, and you just got to roll with it and go. And she did a great job. It's, it wasn't her first time crewing. She's a, she's a superstar. And it was at aid station three when I picked up the poles. I uh, picked those up again and uh, used those the rest of the entire race. Uh, so <laughs> going from planning to use them for 11 miles to actually using them for about 50 miles instead. Uh, so yeah, plan for all the, uh, all the possibilities. I should have taken the gloves. So uh, between aid station three and four, you know, I hit the 50 kilometer distance, uh, 31 miles. Still in a pretty decent time. It was like six hours and 40-ish minutes. So I was moving pretty well, um, probably too well. But, um, you know, it was just a low spot. I wasn't feeling good at all. Uh, the demons got into my head and were telling me that, you know, your, your legs are so tired. You can't go on another 40 miles. Um, you know, you could just you could just quit and go back to the hotel and enjoy the afternoon with your wife. Go get some dinner, hang out, you know, have a good time. And... All those things were going through my head. Um, you know, I kept telling myself that, you know, there's been a lot of people that have given up things for this race. You know, me, uh, a little bit of training I did. You know, my wife, uh, my sister watching my kids um, here at the house, you know, for us so we could come up here and do the race. Uh, and, you know, just I had you guys, YouTube, you know, that I was filming. I didn't want to, I didn't want to, I, I had never DNF'd. I didn't want to DNF. Um, and I wanted to keep pushing. And, I still wanted to quit. I mean, I wanted to quit bad. Um, I honestly believe if my wife had not been there at that age station four, that I would have turned in my bib and quit. Uh, it was it was that bad. It was the lowest I'd ever been. But she uh, she knew what to say, and you know, she's like, you know, just just go to the next age station. Just try to go to the next age station. See if you can do it. Um, you know, you just walk if you have to. Walk the whole way. Um, you know, run if you can. Just go to the next age station. You know, eat something. Uh, you know, you might feel better. Just keep going and see, and we'll we'll talk about it there. And so I I did. Uh, I continued on. I think the caffeine really helped. It uh, you know, caffeine's a performance enhancer. It's it's scientifically proven, and I think that it really helped. It, uh, you know, it gave me a little boost that I needed in my legs, and I was able to continue on. I was able to still run. Um, you know, a little bit here and there. We I would run, walk, run, walk, kind of thing, and it was moving at a pretty decent pace. I mean. Um, you know, so it was, it was okay. Kept moving and got to the next aid station, aid station, I think five it was. I'm actually watching the video right now and kind of commenting as I go through it. <laughs> aid station five, I believe is what yeah, so at aid station five, that's where um, it was a pretty, fairly easy accessible place for my wife. She had to walk a little ways. Um, but that's where I used the massage gun for the first time, hit the quads, the hamstrings, which the hamstrings, man, that was, I felt great on those. Uh, but that's also where I had some Mountain Dew. It's the first time ever in an ultra I've had any kind of soda, uh, anything. You know, normally a lot of people like co uh, Coke, but they had Mountain Dew and Coke. And I used to love Mountain Dew back when I was drinking sodas 20 years ago. Um, that's what that was my my <laughs> my soda of choice. You know, Mountain Dew or Code Red specifically. Uh, so the Mountain Dew was cold. It was felt great, and that caffeine was awesome. So uh, I was surprised. I had some later on in the race too. And um, it just, it helped, you know, I, I ate more. I had a, a couple of uh, uh, caffeine uh, spring energy gels, the Hill Aid energy gel or the Hill Aid gel, which was really good. Uh, I had some caffeine in there to give me a little bit more of a boost. And I started feeling a little bit better. You know, my mood changed. Um, I wasn't having the same doubts in the head. I knew pretty much going through that I was gonna finish. It would just be slower than I wanted. Um, but it was, I knew I would finish, so things were looking a little bit better. So then about uh, 46 miles in, I, I uh, left aid station six, and that's where I ate some of the Lenny and Larry's cookie, which was really the biggest kind of food that I ate all day other than Tailwind and, and Spring Energy Gels. 
I had that, a lot of water, used the massage gun some more, um, used the ice towel to kind of wipe my face off, my neck, cool down a little bit. It wasn't really hot, but just cleaning my face with something felt awesome, like so good. Because uh, it was just, I mean, I was so humid and just pouring sweat all day. So it felt nice to get kind of, you know, clean. <laughs> and from there, it was like uh, 10, 10.7 miles to the next aid station. It was a long haul. Uh, and it just, you know, I, I kept running, running and uh, walking when I needed. And, you know, I was still turning in probably 14-ish minute miles, maybe 15s here and there. Every once in a while, maybe a 13. Uh, but just, you know, slower than I would have liked, but I was still moving, still trucking along, uh, and, you know, mood was okay. And it was, I just can't get past the, like, this course was so beautiful all along the different segments. The, the, the ferns that were growing were so green and big and just gorgeous. I highly recommend if you want to go hike, through hike, run, do this race uh, on the Laurel Highlands Hiking Trail. Uh, it's beautiful. Definitely worth the trip. It was, uh, it was also on that segment where I hit uh, 50 miles. It was like a 11 hours and 52 minutes. So still again, you know, on pace for like a sub 24, 100 mile pace. Um, felt pretty good. Um, I was tired, legs were hurting. Uh, but you know, at that point it was 50 miles. I think, it, I think also we were probably a, uh, well over 9,000 feet of elevation gain at that point because the last part of the race was um, not, there was a couple of smaller climbs here and there, but uh, it wasn't a lot. Uh, mostly just a lot of, there's a good bit of downhill uh, towards the end, but so I hit 50 miles and, you know, I knew I had 20 to go and it was just going to be a, a long slog finishing it out. I ran um, several miles of this segment with a, a girl named Anna and uh, it was great running with her too because we kind of um, paced each other a little bit, you know. I would run, uh, she would run, and we'd walk, or then she would lead, she would run, then she would walk, I would walk, and we kind of helped each other out, talked. Uh, you know, at one point she fell and cut her knee pretty good. I helped her get a bandaid out of her bag so she could, you know, patch her knee up. Uh, and then we continued on and kind of worked like that all the way into the next aid station, which was cool. It was good to work with somebody. So then I finally got to aid station seven, which was the last one where I met my wife. Um, you know, I loaded up on water and tailwind and all that stuff. As I was carrying the bladder in the back of my pack as well because some of those stops were long. Like we to start, we had over 11 miles. We had that almost 11 mile segment in there. Uh, so I was carrying water the whole time, plus the two flasks uh, of tailwind at all times. I mean, I had a lot of tailwind. And so aid station seven, ate a little bit, uh, like I think I had about, about maybe half of a banana, spring energy gel, more tailwind. I had some of my tailwind rebuild there too. She had that for me, so I drank a good bit of the tailwind, tailwind rebuild. Uh, it was the chocolate one, I actually had some, uh, or it might've been the coffee one, it had some caffeine in it, uh, which was great. And then um, from there, uh, Anna and her boyfriend Derek had left before me from that aid station a little bit, so I caught up to them ran with them for that rest of the entire segment. So I spent about four miles with them going to aid station eight. It was great. We talked, we chatted, you know, the three of us uh, kind of leapfrogging and running and walking the whole way, which was good to work together with somebody again and just to talk because I, I spent a good bit of the race alone as well. So it was nice to have some people to hang out with for a bit. So we came into aid station eight together, uh, which was you know, no crew access. It was uh, Anna, Derek, and myself came in. Um, you know, they had some more food at that aid station than I did. I think I had a couple of orange slices and some strawberries and grabbed a couple more spring energy gels. Um, and then I left before them at that aid station because that was the last one. We had like eight miles to go and I was feeling pretty good. Um, Derek was feeling a little bit low at that point. Uh, so I, I left before them and took off and I was able to catch uh, and pass five people on that segment of the eight miles. Uh, I passed them probably maybe three miles into that eight mile segment uh, on a climb. Uh, I was still climbing okay, even though my legs were dead, which I was surprised. <laughs> uh, but I didn't, actually, I didn't actually turn on my headlamps at all until maybe it was like 8.30 at night. Uh, it was late and uh, I could see okay, uh, but you know when I turned them on, I had the waist lamp on to kind of cast that lower shadow. And then I had the headlamp on as well, which worked really good, good combination. Highly recommend if you're doing a, a night run, an ultra at night, use a, a waist lamp and a headlamp. It just works really well together. Or a crazy bright waist lamp. Uh, but that segment, the last one, was, you know, went pretty good. You know, I was motivated to finish, so I was moving pretty good. Um, still running and walking. But then the last, like, two and a half miles was just a constant downhill the entire way. I was worried it was going to be, like, super steep and just I wasn't going to be able to run because it was going to be so steep. But it was luckily... 
um, you know, fairly gradual, um, you know, it was runnable. And so I ran most of it. And it was great too because uh, the RDs had marked some of that section of the course with these little reflective pieces. So you could see a way ahead, like uh, where the trail was and, you know, really kind of your flashlight hit it, your headlamp hit it and it would pop the trail out and you kind of just a, you know, a confidence boost to know you're heading the right way and it's nighttime and sometimes hard to see those yellow blazes on the tree. Uh, so that was great. And so the last, the last little bit, last couple of miles went by pretty well. I ran most of it um, and, you know, I came into the finish Saw my wife, uh, which was great. Uh, she had gone and picked up the vegan pizza, which I asked her to do back at like uh, aid station seven, because uh, I told her I'd heard about one, and so she went to find it. She had to drive like 30 minutes out of the way to go get it, which was awesome, so thank you for that. Um, but then, yeah, finished. Got the little um, award right here. This is it, the 70 mile obelisk, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, big for a finisher's award, which is really neat. Uh, but you know, I finished in like 16 hours and 59 minutes, I think 16 hours, 58, something like that. Uh, I'm still waiting on the official results cause the ones they had posted had the, uh, relay runners in there too. And I want to see what it was without the relay. I think without the relay, I'm probably in the top 25 is my guess. Uh, which, you know, I'm totally happy with how I finished. Uh, I was right on, you know, my, my two projections that I had printed off from ultra pacer were a 16 hour and a 17 hour and I finished in 1659. So super happy with that um even though it went bad i was in low spots i continued to go uh, and i was able to move it and, and finish it in a pretty decent time uh, i think with proper training and like before i rolled my ankle if i was able to continue my training the way i, I wanted to and was planning to you know with you know my vert dot run coach and uh i feel pretty confident in saying that i probably could have finished in a sub 15 hour time and probably finished in the top five uh is what i i feel confident in saying that because uh it's a, uh, I mean, it's rocky, it's rooty, but um, as long as you're careful, you can run just about all of it except for those big climbs. And, you know, I, I think I would have done well, but I'm still happy with the way it went. So overall, you know, it, it, I'm pleased. Uh, can't ask for more on only being able to run 25, 30 miles a week for the months leading up to that because of the ankle, sometimes not even running more than seven, eight miles a week uh, after the injury, you know, so. Uh, all in all, a success. It was a great event. I definitely recommend it. The race was run really well. Having a course that's marked like that every mile with those obelisks like that was nice. Uh, and the trees were marked really well with the yellow blazes the entire way. There's a couple sections you'd get to that was kind of like maybe there was a couple of turns. They had the trees just painted yellow, basically. I mean, there was a lot of marking. So it was, if you got lost on that trail, you must have been falling asleep because it was marked really well. Um, only suggestion I would have for the race directors would be at the start, have some porta johns. There were no porta johns there. Uh, there was a bathroom that was open that was part of the rafting company, but it only had two stalls and one of them was like locked and nobody could get in it. And you know, there was a lot of people that had to go to the bathroom. It's an ultra. You're, I saw the meme. It fits perfectly. Uh, before a race, you're trying to poop, but then during the race, you're trying not to poop. So, uh, at, you know, at the start, everybody's got to go. And so, yeah, have some, have some Porta Johns at the start is my only suggestion to you guys, because uh, that, that would have been needed, or it was needed. Uh, it would have been nice. So, uh, yeah, that's, that was the Laurel Highlands 70 mile race. It's a good race. I got my Western States qualifier done. I've got another one this year. Uh, you know, obviously, I won't get another ticket for it, but I'm still going to, you know, do it, the No Business 100. Uh, that's my next big race. That's October 1st. Uh, I do have a Ragnar relay before that as well in August at some point. Uh, that's just a fun thing with friends hanging out. You know, it's going to be a good time. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's what's up. So I'm planning to start back um, going hard training in July, July 1st, um, you know, and train well. So that's the plan. Hopefully I keep my ankles healthy. Uh, I need to work in some elevation training uh, because I've got some big goals next year where I'm going to need a lot, <laughs> a lot of elevation training, a lot of elevation gain, and uh, the legs will need to be strong. We'll just say that. So stay tuned for that. It's going to be fun, hopefully. Uh, but yeah, I know this was long, but I wanted to kind of break down the race a little bit, talk about kind of what happened out there. Um, just if I was giving you any advice for people getting into ultras, maybe moving from a 50K to a 100K distance or 100 mile distance, just know there's always going to be low points. Um, you're always going to, you, you might want to quit at some point. I did. Uh, I wanted to, uh, but I went on to my crew having that support crew was awesome. Um, you know, there's definitely people that do it without support crews do it solo and that's awesome. Uh, but having a good support crew is key. So if you can line that up, have somebody, you know, that you can count on, uh, and then just know that 
just go to the next aid station. No matter how bad you feel, as long as it's not like a medical emergency kind of thing, uh, it's probably just mental. Get some food, get some caffeine, and then just go to the next aid station. Give it time, you'll, you'll bounce back and, and start to feel a little bit better. Um, that, that's my advice. So take, take a lesson from me there. Uh, and also, you know, don't go into a race, you know, that you're not trained for at all. So luckily I have a good base I was able to rely on because, you know, I've, I've done this distance many times. I've done much harder things. So, um, you know, it was good to have that base and I used it. So anyway, I'm babbling on, but thank you guys for watching. I do appreciate you. Uh, if you haven't already by chance and you want to take a look at that race video, it's going to be on the right side of your screen. Go ahead and check it out. It's a uh, pretty good video. I think I like it. Um, but yeah, so check that out. And then over here on the right side of your screen uh, will be a playlist of some other trail running videos to check out too. So thank you for watching. I appreciate you all and I'll talk to you on the next one.